Hi, this is Larry Maddox from SlideTrip.com, and uh, I get a lot of uh, people that uh, don't know how to create a JEDCOM file, and so I'm creating this little video to show you how to do this. And this is just creating a JEDCOM file from Legacy Family Tree. There are other genealogy programs that you. Um, can create JITCOM files from. Some people call them GETCOM files. I call them JETCOM files. Anyway, um, so there, the reason that we have JETCOM files is to share data between two different genealogy programs such as between Legacy Family Tree and Roots Magic. I have both of those. Um, you use your JEDCOM file to upload your data into various online genealogy websites such as familysearch.org and you can uh, of course download um, your JEDCOM file from various sites to import it into Legacy Family Tree. This will only cover exporting your JEDCOM file from Legacy Family Tree. After I uh, get finished just showing you how to export a JEDCOM file, I'll give you a, an alternative way. But in the meantime, I just wanted to uh, at least get started and show you how to do this. So this Legacy Family Tree, it's uh, very popular. There is either the free version or the uh, paid version. And um, the free version, I think, is probably as good as you need to have. I have the paid version because it has, it helps me to, to find the location of uh, ancestors. Anyway, so I click on this file tab. You know, you could be anywhere, you could be in reports or whatever, but you click over to this file tab, click on export here, and I'm going to go a little bit slow because I've in the past have gone fast and, and I just have gone too fast. I have created tons and tons of JEDCOM files and I've come across supposedly expert genealogists that do a lot of genealogy that have never created a JEDCOM file and um, anyway it's to, to share data between you and a fellow researcher it's very helpful to know how to do this so you click on ex export click on JEDCOM file and um, if you were going to uh, share this between two legacy um, programs, Legacy Family Tree, uh, you would just use Legacy, although there are better ways to do it if you're going to do that. Um, but Legacy has, if you use the Legacy um, version of a JEDCOM file, it, 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 you don't lose um, as much information. You st it still doesn't transfer over images. But uh, but it transfers over a lot of details that um, that the uh, standard JEDCOM 5.5 does not transfer over. This does not transfer over some of the things that only legacy stores, like uh, more details on event address locations, for example. But it but it does transfer over the main information that you have on your ancestors, their their uh, vital statistics, their their event places, maybe not the address or the phone number or whatever, but it, it transfers over the, like the marriage place, the birthplace, the christening, day, you know, all that. A, a lot of a lot of programs will only accept this. This is the standard. JEDCOM 5.5 is the standard that all all genealogy programs should accept. Now, I noticed on Roots Magic they don't output a standard JEDCOM 5.51. They they just have, unless they've changed it in the last couple of months, they only uh, have their version. Anyway, send somebody your basic JEDCOM information, click JEDCOM 5.51. I always click on ATF-8. That uh, gets 
all of the um, special characters that you might have in a name. So um, some of these other options. I wouldn't worry about this. Um, you, I wouldn't worry about this. Have it on or off. Uh, if you're collaborating with uh, a, a relative on something, you might want to include all this. Um, include that. Um, show, include that. On the on the privacy options, if this is going into a public database, I would I would exclude living people. It's up to you whether you exclude them totally as if they didn't exist or just suppress their information and maybe put uh, um, change their name to living or just suppress their details. It, you know, you don't want um, private information going out on the Internet because there's all kinds of weird people out there that, that uh, will cause damage or steal your identity. Um, and... Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what you would like to do there. Um, leave all that off or on. Just You can decide. And then save. And um, now this is uh, recording everybody in the entire, in your entire file. This is to send somebody your entire genealogy file. Or you can click on here to... Uh, to determine who you are going to send this for and I won't go into this but this will allow you to create a focus group and um, you know you can get very specific on on what branches of your family you're going to uh, create we'll just leave it all the same and then um, here you can click on compiler that is your information that um, goes into your JetCom file so that people will know where this came from. Then here is where you click and you're going to save this and um, you're, uh, you give this a name, say say it's the um, the high fields. Um, I'm just going to call this high field temp. And uh, click on, you know, just don't ha I w don't put any spaces at all. Some systems do not handle spaces in the file name. Just have it all one. You can put maybe caps like I did, but don't put any spaces. Please, thanks. <laughs> sometimes you can get away with it, but sometimes uh, you break something. Click save. Um, you know, I just decided that I don't want to save it there. I am going to redo this. I am going to quickly redo this and save it into the, um, um, make sure I've got all this redone. It's good to go over this again. Um, I want to save this in a certain area um, for now. Just I want to save it into the um, onto the desktop. You know, I'll call this uh, high field. I'm going to call it high field temps because I'm doing this as a, a demo. Um, now it's creating. The JetCom file and saving it. Now you want to um, you want to send an email. You, you a lot of times you, you're doing this because you want to send it to somebody, a, a relative or whatever. So here's my my um, my Gmail um, email, and you put. You know, I don't have to teach you how to do an email, but uh, you want to grab that JetCom file. 
grab it out of where you just saved it. There it is. Cl click open. And uh, then it's uh, in Gmail. It's it's saving that in so that you can uh, send that to a uh, friend or relative. Or sometimes, if you're on a website, you can upload your JetCom file, and uh, you need to know where to find it. Remember where you save it. I saved it on the desktop. You can. Uh, save it on the desktop and then when you upload it grab it from the desktop. Uh, here is one alternative to um, a JEDCOM file. Some programs can read in the data from the uh, legacy family tree and uh, so what you do is you click backup and um, you include media files and um, so that so this is this is where you're storing the backup and this is where you you are storing the media files and that includes if the photos and maybe audio files or videos or whatever uh, this allows usually it's just photos that people have saved and this is this is nicer because well it does you know if you're sending this to uh, someone that you know that in, then that's good. You want, don't want to send this out to the public because it automatically saves all of the uh, personal information. And if they're using Roots Magic, that should be able to read in a, you know, a legacy uh, database. And so this is not a JEDCOM file. It's the related. It's the legacy family tree database format of storing your data. But some programs like Roots Magic can uh, read that end. That's all I have. Have fun and good luck.